for the first time in their history. PBA bowlers face an ultimatum. Next season's tour is exempt, and a win guarantees you entrance. The tour's first half was filled with drama as some matches came down to the very last shot. One, two, eight, ten, big one, covers! Gotta have a strike here. Ten pin, no! And Norm Duke has won! Chris Johnson needs a mark to win this game. A title on the line. Unbelievable. Look out! With this spare, he can win. Doesn't get it. Steve Jarrett's win sitting on the bench. Unbelievable. The lefties asserted dominance from their side of the lanes with Jason Couch and Patrick Allen taking titles. And there were some champions who completely dominated, culminating with perfection from the big fin, Mika Koivunemi in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. At the Tournament of Champions, Patrick Keeley Jr. finished in style, capturing his first career major and becoming the only repeat winner in 10 events. Nine men emerge with jobs intact, while some very familiar names find themselves on the outside looking in. Ten events left. Anything can happen on the PBA Tour. We are right next to the base of the Space Needle in Seattle, all 520 feet of it, the same area as the Pacific Science Center and Key Arena. Coming to you from the Fisher Pavilion in the Seattle Center in downtown Seattle, home of the PBA Tour. The PBA is live on ESPN. Our five finalists are ready to roll. From Claremont, Florida, he bowled 300 last year's Earl Anthony Classic TV Finals and won his 21st career title earlier this season in Kansas City, Norm Dew. A two-time titleist who stands 11th at the PGA World Rankings, makes his third TV appearance of the season from Wichita, Kansas, Lonnie Wallachick. From Amarillo, Texas, he looks for his first title since 1992. The only bowler to make four TV finals this season. Our lone left-hander today, Mike Scroggins. A PBA Hall of Famer who won his sixth PBA Player of the Year award last season. Second all-time with 37 career titles. From Mocala, Florida, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. He won his fourth career title earlier this season in Toledo, one of 16 players to throw 300 on TV from Bolingbrook, Illinois, near Chicago, Steve Jarris. That's our final five from Seattle, gunning for a tour title and big prize money. Welcome everyone, Dave, Ryan, Randy Peterson. Let's break down the matchup. Wild card match pits Norm Duke battling shoulder and leg injuries, and Lonnie Wallachek, who ran over Pete Weber in the round of eight. In semifinal number one, Walter Ray Williams Jr. makes his first TV appearance of the season. He takes on Mike Scroggins, who looks for his first title in 190 events. Steve Jarris, the leader through 18 games of qualifying, waits for the wild card winner in semifinal number two. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire crew. Live from Seattle, Washington, it's the Earl Anthony Classic presented by Storm, Monty Walchek, and the injured Norm Duke. We'll see, Randy, how Norm can recover from multiple injury issues. 21 career titles, and he looked gimpy. He looked like he was in a lot of pain just in the warm-ups in the last few minutes. <laughs> Right through the nose, beginning the second half of the PBA Tour. Yeah, As no. you know, he missed some action with the pinched nerve <laughs> in his shoulder. He's having fun with a, a tough shot. Also, a quad injury to talk about. Hurt his quad uh, over the summer, working out at home, and it never really healed. This week at Pacific Lanes, where we had the qualifying, the approaches were a little sticky towards the foul line, where Norm goes into the slide. He re-injured that quad. Starting far off to the left. On the boards, looking for his approach and trying to get a spare, but can't pick up everything in an open frame to begin. The Earl Anthony Classic from Fisher Pavilion in the Seattle Center. What a beautiful area this is. 
Key Arena, home of the Supersonics and Space Needles we showed you right next door. Pacific Science Center and Lonnie Walchek all the way from Wichita, Kansas. He told us last night a very good season in the first half, but not what he wanted. This would be a win and an exemption for next year. Well, the way Lonnie's been bowling this season, I don't think he has to worry about having a, an exempt spot on next year's roster. It's his third telecast. He's been bowling really, really consistent all year long. And right off the bat, I see Lonnie trying to circle the lane condition a little bit more than the guys have done all week long. A lot to work on in the Christmas break for Lonnie Wallacek after he returned from the East Coast. We'll talk more about that after we see the Baby Ruth Real Deal matchup. Pretty even match with the exception of average right here, but obviously the big question mark Norm Duke's health and watching Norm in practice, he did not look good. Looked like he was really favoring that left leg. If he cannot bear weight on that left quad, he cannot make good shots. It's plain and simple. A little bit sticky on these approaches. That was Norm's issue last night. Remember all the bowling up until now as Lonnie leaves a pin. Has been at Pacific Lanes in Tacoma, about 30 miles from where we are. The first competition of the tournament here today at the Seattle Center. Nice look at Lonnie Wallachek's release and ball roll. Told me that he was trying to get his hand on the side all week long. Get that ball to read the pattern the right way. Six spin. And it covers for a mark. So back to back spares for Lonnie Wallachek to get things going here. As we begin the second half of our tour season live coverage here on ESPN from Seattle, the home of the PBA Tour. Not exactly the starts Norm certainly has wanted, but he gets moving after the slow beginning. Unfortunately for Norman, following suit with an open frame to begin play here in Seattle. Had a hurry, and it did just that. Different ball that, on that lane that he used on the left lane, Dave. And right now, you can see in Norm's face, his demeanor, he's gutting it out right now. Just a beautiful shot here. A little bit less aggressive bowling ball. That ball holds line and is perfectly flush, almost the A-pin standing. It's tough to watch last night when he was bowling against Walter Ray in the round of eight. Norm all but withdrew in the last game. Became the wild card, lost in the round of eight to Walter Ray Williams Jr. Four games to none. There's a seven pin in that best of seven match, and you can see the pain in his face. Dang it. There's Norm, eight and six in his match play record to get here, a 215.63 average, and bowed out to Walter Ray. He's the wild card because of that high pinfall through qualifying. The highest among the losers in the round of eight. And look at how gimpy he is upon the release. It's painful to watch him up here. We know normally on TV and when you watch him compete throughout the years, we've seen him on tour. He's so upbeat, outgoing, and very pleasant with the crowd. Really works the gallery. But not the case today. He's in pain. 11th career TV appearance, Lonnie Walchek. Looks on a spare, and a perfect shot. First strike for him in this match, third frame. 12 and four match play record, 218, 74 average for Lonnie. It is three match play efforts, including the victory over PDW last night in Tacoma, in five games. Look at the guys that he beat. I mean, all-world Pete Weber, mm -hmm. Ryan Schaefer won a tournament earlier in the season, and Tim Mack, just the best amateur player that's ever lived. So not exactly a cakewalk through match play for Lonnie Wallachek. Lonnie's worked a lot on his posture. That was the big message to us last night, and that's right through the old schnoz coming high. When the body dips down, he has trouble with his release point and the erratic behavior on the lane. Yeah, he gets... Gets his body leaning too far forward too early, and he has problems with his swing getting too vertical. Right now, he's going to try to negotiate the 3, 4, 6, 7, 10.
Same lane as Norm Duke had that difficult frame to begin play here. Where he just knocked down eight pins in his first frame. A challenging shot here. Lonnie Walchek. All but one. We well, got real close. He needed to get the ball just a little bit further right of the three pin. And Norm Duke right now is back in this match. Actually takes a one pin lead sitting on the bench. On the left lane, Norm came in a little light. And you could see why because not being able to use that left leg, can't get his hand in it. And being more of a finesse player, touch and feel on the approaches for Norm is so critical as he's told us about. So the injury really is going to be a problem for him. Gotta both do that, boss. He used to soft hand all week long, Dave, and to do that, or to make you know any kind of shot, any good shot, you have to have balance and leverage. You have to be able to get your weight over your left leg if you're a right hander and just the opposite if you're a left hander. If you can't, it's real hard to have a good release at the bottom of the swing. Takes care of the 10 pin. He's 26 in the tour rankings. As we told you, he's already won this year. A victory in Kansas City giving him exemption for next year. But as always, player of the year honors are a big goal with Norm. Top eight for the World Championship field in Michigan in March to get to that round of Super 16, and that's the way you do it. Strikes in the fifth frame, his second strike of the match. Well, if there's any question about Norm being a fighter, he just switched back to the other bowling ball. And watch this. He's got to get his weight on that left leg. You can see him favoring it, standing up a little bit. you never seen Norm Duke bail out of a shot. Just fighting through it. Back to all check. Second of the TV pair. Blisters the rack. We talked about the March of the World Championship trying to make that round of Super 16 bypass all the qualifying in Ypsilanti, Michigan in March to wrap up our season. Top eight get there. Lonnie Walchek in 11th place right now. Duke in 26, as we mentioned. Lonnie, with the two shows early in the season, really has had a good year, but he's hard on himself. You know that very focused athlete, really committed to the mental aspect of the sport. And he's not happy just with sort of getting to shows. He wants victories. And as he said last night, hey, I want to put myself in a position to win all 10 shows in the second half. <laughs> Lofty goals. And a great shot. When we return, we'll break down the oil pattern and see how the bowlers have had success on pattern A this week in Tacoma and now in Seattle. It's the wild card match. Lonnie Walchek looking for his first win of the year against the legendary Norm Duke, trying to overcome so many injury issues and win today in Washington. Today's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Earl Anthony Classic presented by Storm is brought to you by... Miller High Live, to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the High Live. By Cambridge Credit Counseling, log on to nodat.com and find out how good it feels to be debt-free. And by GEICO, a 15-minute phone call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We're coming in from beautiful downtown Seattle, Washington. Thankfully, the blizzard is gone. We are not buried in snow, as we had been earlier this week. Tacoma, the bowlers hoping to rock their way to a title here on ESPN's live coverage with KBA Tour. Welcome to Great Northwest, everyone. Dave Ryan and Randy Peters. Hope you had a good holiday season. Glad to see you again for the second half. The big question bowling fans had, Randy, in half number one, what in the world happened to Walter A. Williams Jr.? He won the tour title last year, player of the year, and no shows for the first half. He's back now to begin the second half in Seattle. Can he make a serious run in half number two? Well, if anybody can, I think it's Walter Ray Williams Jr. Last year, he made almost a half a million dollars. This year, dismal by his standards, 32nd on the point list, 28th on the money list. If Walter Ray's going to turn his season around, it starts today. Our pattern has been A, which for the touch bowlers has really been beneficial this week. Pattern A, but we used a, a completely different oil than we've used all season long. It was real slick, which kept the players a little bit straighter this week. When the lanes broke down, they could feed it just a little bit into the second arrow. As the oil pushed down the lane, the back ends got really tight, but the best part about this oil is the front part of the lane stayed really, really good. When the oil conditioner broke down, the lane stayed good. You didn't see the players making that big, giant step to the left. 
And at PBA.com, ready for all the latest info on PBA players, events, and even official contests like the Odor Eaters split with a million bucks sweepstakes. Thursday, January 15th, the deadline for this contest. So head to PBA.com and click on the Odor Eaters link to register for your chance to win a million bucks. The wild card match continues. Down by 10, Norm Duke. Overcoming the pain. Oh! With big shots like that. Gets help on the 10. And we're even. What a great break Norm Duke just got with the Tomahawk 10. Six pin's going to go to the sidewall. Watch this. The second pin from your right. It's going to lean into the 10 pin. There you go. Next to the trip four, that's a bowler's best friend. Goes to two. Come on. One ball right here. Lane breakdown, open for Norm Duke on the left to start. And Walchek also had his open on that left of the two TV lanes we have in Seattle. Synthetic lanes, synthetic approaches. Players like it. Flirting with the channel, crossing way over and a difficult split. Ah. 4 7, the 6 up for Norm Duke. Boy, when it left his hand, it looked like it was further right. It didn't look like it was going to get back. That ball overbounced, went right through the nose, and Norm pays the ultimate penalty with a big split. Could have had a 10 pin lead. Instead, another open on that left lane. Why the trouble on the left lane, Randy? Well, I'm not really sure. You know, the both, both times that Norm did make a mistake, they were both through the nose for big splits. The Greek church in the first frame, 4 6 7 there. On the wall check, had his wife, Amy, and two young children with him for the first half of the PBA Tour season in a motor home, but that is back in Wichita at home now. Shreds the rack. And his wife, Amy, taking care of the kids back home. One thing that Lonnie Walachek does as well as anybody out here is he's got a real soft speed and a lot of hand. And you see the directional change down the lane. Because of the direction that ball is rotating in, once, once friction's created, that's the direction the ball travels in. Eighth frame, chance for a four-bagger. He leads by 25, chance for a 35-pin lead. So it's his first tournament away from the family. Ooh. Which has got to be a tough adjustment. There's a 10-pin for him when, as you know, traveling with your family in the motorhome, suddenly now you're by yourself. He's rooming with his brother Brian and Jason Durant, too. Well, he was with his family for so many weeks in a row and now goes back to the grind of being with uh, two roommates. But at least they're good friends and... Uh, his brother, like you said, he's used to doing that. Much nicer to have the family out, though. 10 pin. 24 pin lead as he glances the right side of the 10. Amy and the kids will take a drive from Wichita to Dallas later in the season, about a four hour drive. Situation is simple Norm Duke strikes out, he shoots 212. Lonnie Wallachek's going at a 206 pace. What I mean by that is if, if Lonnie goes strike spare all the way out, fills 20 pins of frame, 206. Has to hurry and then goes too much as it drags on it up now. the friction point time. at the end of the oil of and ends up going right through Spare. the nose again. The head pin, it came in high. Can't do that. I think Norm's feeling some pain. Can't create any leverage to make consistent shots at the bottom. Folks, if there's any misconception about pro bowlers not being great athletes, this is a perfect situation to show you here, a demonstration of that. Really challenging to go through the pain and endure everything that Norm has had to. Coming up in semifinal number one, the lone lefty of the show, Mike Scroggins against the player we mentioned earlier, Walter Ray Williams Jr., who has had that big struggle in the first half of the season. No shows for the legend. Player of the year last year. Can he rebound? Overall, oh. those two have never met on TV, and little help. And another ball, norm. another ball change. Another ball change. Remember the last one on that lane overhooked. He goes to the straighter ball, carries the light wall he hit. Best Norm can shoot, 202. He needs help from Lonnie Wallachek. And Lonnie Wallachek, he is dialed in on this right lane. 
Has been all day. Can he continue that ninth frame? Foundation time. Trying to extend the lead. 60 feet to success for the very focused Lonnie Walchek. Seventeen pins in the tenth frame. Lonnie Wallachek will shut out Norm Duke. The best way to close the deal right now, just throw a strike right here. After the TV pair. It's a bit easy for either bowler. Can he wrap it up here? Yes, he can. Lonnie Wallachek clinches the match over Norm Duke in the wild card. He's off to the semifinals. And Steve Jarris awaits the right-hander, Lonnie Walchett. Looks for his first tour title of this season. I give a lot of credit to Norm Duke, folks, for cutting through extreme pain. Absolutely a difficult scenario for Norm to compete under these circumstances. And Lonnie getting a feel for his next match against Jarris on that left hand. Talked to Norm before the telecast, asked him what his plans were after after the telecast, win or lose. He just doesn't know. I think Norm is going to have to take another week or two off and, and now heal another injury. You know what Dave Ryan's sixth on the money list this year? He's actually missed six tournaments due to injuries. You've got to ask yourself, how good could Norm have done if he was healthy this year? Where would he be if he was healthy? Maybe up there for Player of the Year honors. It's quite possible he was on a real roll when he won at Blue Springs, Missouri, the greater KC Classic, October 19th. Defeated Mika Emmy by three pins, 197-194 in the final that day. After knocking off Chris Barnes by 30 pins. Got one, man. Lonnie knows he's moving on. Just releasing the ball, you heard a little grunt of pain. It's difficult for Norm Duke today from Claremont, Florida. Near Orlando in his 21st year on. You're killing me! <laughs> There's the fun with the fans we're used to seeing. <laughs> Creative outfits. the ball Norm Duke wanted for the entire match with Walchek. Lonnie is through to take on Steve Jarris in one semifinal as he knocks off Norm Duke by 20 pins. When we come back, we'll hear much more about our semifinal match between Walter Ray Williams Jr. Yeah! He's in action coming up against the lefty Mike Scroggins plus from the girl Anthony great as well. The 1983 PBA National Championship was the last of Earl Anthony's record six wins in this event. Incredibly twice, he would three-peat in this tournament. The 1983 PBA National Championship not only his last major title, but it was the last of his record 41 victories for the late, great Earl Anthony. We are glad to see Earl Anthony's Wife Susie Anthony here as well. And a reminder for the entire 2003-2004 season, Parker Bowman III will be using his pinfall on TV as a base for contributions to the Earl Anthony Memorial Scholarship Fund. So far this season, Parker's pin pledged nearly $2,000. He's raised more than $5,000 over the last two seasons to earn how you can contribute to this worthy fund. Check out Parker's website at www.parkerbone.com. Walter Ray Williams, Jr. We talked about the fact your first half of the season wasn't exactly what you wanted. What kind of things did you work on mentally in the break to get ready for half number two? Well, I didn't really work on anything mentally. I was just thinking that maybe I was paying too much attention to the other guys, how much they hooked the ball, and maybe play my game, which is a little straighter. And fortunately, it worked out pretty well this week. Uh, Mark Baker gave me a tip early in the week, and it seems to be paying off so far. I just need to make a lot of good quality shots, and hopefully it's been pins will cooperate. You've had a chance to practice a bit in the arena setting here, much different than Pacific Lanes in Tacoma. What kind of differences can we expect here? Well, these lanes are hooking a lot more than they were over Pacific Lanes, so 
It's just a matter of playing a, might be a little bit more left than I was. I'm still not going to be hooking the ball quite that much compared to some of the other players, but uh, uh, sometimes it still works. The Hall of Famer, the legend, Walter Ray Williams Jr. going for another win here, Randy, against Mike Scroggins, the left one. And he looked like the Walter Ray of old, four-time PBA champion Mark Baker, who's back out on tour as a rep, worked with Walter Ray. He's been watching Walter Ray for forever, it seems like, and he said, Walter, you look like you're doing something different at the foul line. They worked on getting his release point back where it needs to be. It looked like the, he was letting go of the ball out in front of him. But this guy, Mike Scroggins, when he makes the finals, he makes TV shows. Fourth telecast this year. Like Walter Ray Williams Jr., Mike Scroggins doing what he does best. That's going down and in. A little hook in the back part of the lane. That ball's perfect dead flush. The only thing Mike Scroggins hasn't done, Dave Ryan, is win a game on television. Shocking, and this is a shocking sight, folks. First time all year we've seen Walter Ray Williams Jr. on TV. After his brilliant season a year ago, setting all sorts of records. Baby Ruth, real deal matchup. And a real tight matchup here. The only big difference is spare conversions. I don't think it's going to come down to that. Especially from the start that Mike Scroggins and Walter Ray has started with. Last year, we told you about how brilliant he was. First in tour average this year, down to 14. Great start, getting great pin action. Off the deck for Walter Ray Williams Jr. We are coming to you from Fisher Pavilion, Seattle Center, live coverage from Seattle, Washington of the PBA Tour. The Anthony Classic presented by Storm. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire crew. Hope you had a safe and happy holiday season. We missed doing the bowling for the last couple of weeks. We're glad to be back live coverage on ESPN. Back to Scroggins, the lefty. Perfect. Mike Scroggins got off to a red-hot start at the beginning of the season. Kind of tapered off towards the end of the 10-week swing. He, we asked him why. He said he got a little homesick and, quite frankly, lost some focus. Said last night to us he was very tired and did not have a good finish to the first half after three straight shows. At the end, in Albany 72nd, the Geico Open on the island 102nd. Windsor Locks, Connecticut, 90th. <laughs> Missed his family. Back home in Amarillo, Texas. Wife Melanie, his sons Ross, Will, and baby Maggie. But great time over the holidays with them. He sure did. He loved being at home, too, but he did not like this shot. And we've seen Mike do this before. He gets a little quick, and he has a propensity to make bad shots when he needs to make good ones. He got a little fast, his hand went around the side of the ball early, and the ball never read the lane, just hydroplaned, missing the head pick. Look out. Six stands for Scroggins in the left lane again. It's a bugaboo for the bowlers here today. We saw Norm Duke have some trouble with that, in addition to wall check in the first match. Well, and maybe I misspoke during the baby Ruth, that uh, maybe it will come down to spare conversions, and that was, honestly, that was just a a miscue on Mike Scroggins' part. He should not have missed that spare. Shouldn't have missed the head pin. Turkey ball chance. Walter Ray Williams Jr. is locked in, folks, no doubt about it. This looks like the Walter Ray of old from last year when he blitzed the entire field to get here. A win over a very injured Norm Duke last night in Tacoma in the round of eight, four zip. Collins and Reyes also going down, just lost three total games and three best of seven match play efforts to get to Seattle. 222.91 average. And a 12 and 3 match play record for Walter Ray. Looks for a four bagger. 10 pin will not cooperate with Walter Ray. Walter Ray had his way in match play, like you say, Dave. And I think it's due to one, well, two things. Number one, he was able to play the lanes the way he likes to play them nice and firm and direct. And number two, that little tip from Mark Baker got him to start feeling what he's used to feeling. He told me he had six or seven tournaments in a row where he felt absolutely horrible from, from start to the uh, end of the foul. And he couldn't get it off his hand. Amazing to think about that spare ball, a plastic ball for Walter Ray, who 
in the first half of the year, Empire State Open in Albany, the banquet open, 15th. Those were his best finishes in the first half. That is shocking, folks, for anyone who followed the PBA Tour last year and saw his string of dominance. But here he is. The game appears completely readjusted to what he needs to do. That came a little bit high from the left side for Scroggins in the 4-7 up. Mike told us last night he would do anything to give back the three straight shows early in the year for a win. He'd exchange that to be exempt for next season. He hasn't won since 1992. PBA in points, though, so he's right there to try to make the exempt field next year. A victory today would clinch that. Or maybe next week as we roll to Medford, Oregon for the PBA Medford Open. The action starts as always. 1 o'clock Eastern time, 10 a.m. here on the West Coast on ESPN. Don't miss the best bowlers in the world from Medford. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Looking forward to seeing the Medford Meteor, Marshall Holman, my That's good right. buddy. And Lava Lane is just a tremendous place. Great facility. Love going back to Medford. Scroggins, seven pin. Now, the question is, who's the better golfer? You or Marshall Holman? Well, I think... He's pretty good. Marshall's a great golfer. <laughs> um, it all depends on how well he's putting. If he's putting well, Marshall's, Marshall's pretty tough. If he's got the uh, flat blade going, he's, uh, he's pretty hard to beat. Wow. Unfortunately, not many wins on TV for Scroggins, who struggled. Takes care of the seven pin. His only title, he knocked off Robert Lawrence in Sacramento, California back in 1992. He's cashed in five of ten events so far this year. Match play in five of ten. Walter Ray in seven of twelve he's played. Has made match play. And appears back on his game. All oh, ten down to the pit again for Walter Ray. Check out this swing. This is as direct as you can go. A little bit of back end. When you give Walter Ray angle to the pocket, he's going to be hard to beat. But it's been a long time since we've seen Walter Ray bowl this well. In fact, going back all the way to last season, first telecast of the season. But this is the first time I've seen Walter Ray play the lanes this way. Most of the time on the turf, you get your ball speed too firm. It never turns over. That was an advantage for Walter Ray. He is red hot. Five strikes and a 35-pin lead in his first six frames. It's the PBA Earl Anthony Classic presented by Storm, a semifinal, Scroggins, and Walter Ray Williams Jr. The exciting conclusion when we return. The Dexter approach as well. Welcome back, everyone, to the Fisher Pavilion downtown Seattle for the PBA Earl Anthony Classic presented by Storm. Last season, Walter Ray Williams Jr. tied the late great Earl Anthony by winning his sixth player of the year award. Randy breaks down Walter's award winning style in this week's Dexter approach. Thanks, Dave. You know, we've seen this guy over the years. We come to recognize this beautiful game of Walter Ray's, but it's a little unique. But one of the things that I think makes Walter Ray so great is this. Watch the direction of the swing. Notice how it comes out and away. I'm going to leave that line right there for you. Now watch this. The swing comes out, but it tucks in on the way down. And what it does, it takes his hand and his elbow and gets it to the inside. That's perfect leverage at the bottom of the swing. But a little unusual, the fact that Walter comes up and out of the shot. But it's after the ball leaves his hand. And when you have the hand and eye coordination of a four-time World Horseshoe Pitching Champion, it's not even a factor. They call him Deadeye for a reason. All the horseshoe pitching championships, and that is this week's Dexter approach. And oh, by the way, a great bowler, too. Scroggin has a mark in his last frame, but still down 35 pins. Has to get it going in a hurry. There's a good start. Up this far, Mike Scroggins. 12 and 4 match play record, just over a 220 average. Michael Haugen Jr., we saw him last night in Tacoma, really said to us, Did Michael let a good opportunity slip through my fingers to make the show in Seattle? But he'll be back, he guaranteed in Medford. And he's been bowling well all year. Mm, he has. 
Still on a quest for his first title, as is Mike Scroggins. Yeah! Gets a little help, good pin action on the left of the TV pair for a southpaw. I think since the first two frames, the shot making by Mike Scroggins has been a bit suspect. But he did he does catch a double there, and that's real important. Walter Ray has a 25-pin lead working on a double. Walter Ray has not missed going flush in six frames. Chance for a 35-pin lead here, Randy. He remains right in the pocket. Turkey ball there for Walter Ray Williams Jr. and six strikes in seven frames. Some of the other bowlers, including Nathan Borer, is making a run for PBA Rookie of the Year honors. Did very well in Tacoma. There's Michael Hagen Jr. and PDW came close as well. Ronnie Russell, another rookie on the tour this year, having a great season. Mike Devaney, defending champ. And Mr. 300, Bob Learn Jr. He's mastered the right of the TV pair and the left as well. 45 pin lead, a four bagger. Is he ever dialed in, Randy? He sure is, Dave. Right now he's going at a 249 pace. The best Mike Scroggins can shoot 244. Mike Scroggins can't miss from here on out and needs a little help from Walter Ray. It's that simple. No chance. <laughs> I mean, not the way Walter Ray's going. Mike Scroggins from Amarillo, Texas, trying to get himself back in contention. There's the turkey ball for him on the third straight strike, eighth frame. Are you surprised that Mike did not participate in any regionals, didn't practice more than once or twice over the break, said he just wanted to totally recharge? No, I'm not, because I think a lot of times you can overwork it and overpractice, and I think he needed to just spend time with his family and take a break from bowling for a while. He'd been bowling so well, bowling a lot of games. He needed to decompress. Had a great Christmas dinner, 12 people over at his house. He says he was a little bit rusty to begin this tournament Whoa. in Tacoma. Didn't like the footwork at all. He looked down just as he released the ball and got help with a seven pin. Check this out, like he was bowling in clown shoes. When he gets to the foul line, he's just going to lose balance. Woo! Watch the great break that he gets. He gets a nice break. Pin comes over, takes a seven out. But right now, Walter Ray Williams Jr. is red hot with a strike here. This match is all but over. Just a 35 pin lead. You better believe it. In the pocket for Deadeye each and every time. You know, I talked to Walter Ray last night, and I said, you know, what's it like when the number one player in the world has a couple of bad weeks? And he says, Randy, he says, I lost all confidence, had no idea what was wrong. All I, all I knew was that I couldn't bowl, I couldn't get it done. Made that little change with the help of Mark Baker. I'm back to the show, it's feeling better and better. But what's amazing to me, not surprising, but a little amazing is how well he's bowling right now. He hasn't been, you know, Walter's used to making TV just about every other week. He needs nine pins on the first ball. He's advancing to the title match. Got to be tough to adjust to a different position. We saw his huge numbers. And now just needs nine. Hell take all ten. And a victory over Mike Scroggins. Back on TV and back playing the crowd. This great group of fans we have gathered here at the Seattle Center and Fisher Pavilion in Seattle, Washington. Persistence, the ability to overcome obstacles along the way. Walter Ray found a lot of obstacles, struggling just to get checks out on the tour. He's going to be in the 270s. Only one night spare, Dave Ryan. One more strike. It's 279. You can't do it any better than that. Fourth frame is only non strike frame of this semifinal match with Mike Scrum. So Walter Ray Williams Jr. is off. So Jarris will take on Lonnie Walchick in the other semifinal. The winner of that to take on a red-hot Walter Ray Williams Jr. Who can stop? Walter Ray is a question. It wasn't Mike Scroggins, that's for sure. Jarris and Walchick, a couple right-handers, are coming your way in the next semifinal. They have never met on TV before. In fact, Ronnie hasn't met anyone in this field of five on television prior.
for today's action in Seattle. The PGA Tour season is kicked off on ESPN with a Mercedes Championship live in primetime from Hawaii. 2003 Player of the Year Tiger Woods, the Fennec champion Ernie Els, Mike Weir, VJ Singh headline the field. Join ESPN for three hours of final round coverage tonight at 7 Eastern. Apple BA, two stroke lead over VJ right now, who was amazing yesterday. And a great competition from the islands. Yeah, on Friday, VJ, he's only two shots back, so don't count him out. He had one par on the back on the back side and eight birdies. Mike Scroggins, who tells us he's got seven discs in his shoes that he uses to vary the approach. You know, on synthetic lanes, synthetic approaches, it worked well in Tacoma, with Pacific lanes where they held the competition until the TV finals. Some footwork issues here for him, but still a great run for Mike Scroggins, the lefty. Walter Ray Williams Jr. is off to the final, his 73rd career final appearance. Who can forget, last January 5th, Norm Duke had a 300 game on TV against Walter Ray Williams Jr. I could not be that calm to bowl a perfect game on television. And then I found myself finally getting to that situation. And, and the calming effect that I had, the confidence that I had, was nothing like that I had prepared myself. Today's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Earl Anthony Classic presented by Storm is brought to you by Storm, the bowler's company. By the official candy bar of the PBA, Baby Ruth from Nestle, the real deal. And by Uniroyal, the official tire of the PBA Tour. Uniroyal tires trusted by American families since 1892. Seattle Space Needle, 520 feet high. It offers an incredibly gorgeous 360 degree view of Seattle. Takes all 41 seconds to get to the top, and it's just about 25 feet or so from where we are here at the Fisher Pavilion, the Seattle Center. We welcome you back to Seattle. A year ago, Norm Duke became the 15th player to bowl a televised 300 game. He remembers his momentous day in this week's Miller Milestone. You know, deep down, I expect things like that out of myself. I'm a professional athlete, I'm an entertainer, and, and that is the, the pinnacle of what we can do. I'd watched 14 people prior to me bowl a 300 on television. I was just thinking to myself all the time, there's no way I could accomplish that. I could not be that calm to bowl a perfect game on television. And then I found myself finally getting to that situation. And the calming effect that I had, the confidence that I had, was nothing like that I had prepared myself for. And so there I am, just calm as I could be and confident. He's on his way. Six straight strikes. The eighth frame was the one shot that I wasn't very proud of, but we got a strike. And at that moment, boy, I knew I had a pretty good shot at it. The ninth one was the, the one that I said to myself, this is the, going to be the hardest of the four shots to throw because I've been setting and I needed to, to, to move, you know, just to move instead of sit. And I threw it perfectly. And at that moment, I said, wow, that was supposed to be the hardest one. And, and that was a juicy shot. The confidence was, was really surreal in a sense that I knew that if I achieved this, which was to stay in the moment and throw my shot, then I would achieve this, which was something that I, I dreamed about for so many years. He just needs one more strike. You know, I watched that ball go through the pins before it ever got there, and there was no way it could leave anything. And my buddy Brian Voss said it perfect. He said, that was the perfect shot. And, and when it happened, I was just a step. Fate, in a sense, had a lot to do with my 300 game because, in my mind, it had already happened that I just knew it. Maybe that was the reason that that ball struck, is that I willed it to happen. I don't know, but it sure was pretty. And I knew it as soon as I let it go. Our Miller Highlight Milestones, one of the all-time great moments in PBA history. Look at the foul line. There is an injured Norm Duke who competed today. Steve Jarris has a 300 game on TV in 99. Chattanooga, Tennessee, got by Ricky Ward, 300-200 in the title match. The 13th player ever in PBA history to roll a 300 TV game. Jarris, the right-hander from Chicagoland, head-to-head -head with a native of Wichita, Kansas, Ronnie Walchek. Semifinals when we come back.
In 1988, Earl Anthony was bowling in his rookie season of the PBA Senior Tour, and what a welcome addition he was. After qualifying first, he would beat John Hersina in the championship match of a PBA Senior Championship from Canton, Ohio. The major senior event would be the first of his seven senior victories to go along with his 41 national tour wins, a PBA tour record. What a career the great Earl Anthony had. The numbers are mind-boggling. 41 career titles, 10 major championships, 111 times on TV, and Walter A. Williams Jr. tying him with his sixth player of the year honor last year. More than $1.4 million in earnings. Steve Jarris is trying to get there in that list somehow. It'll take a while. He's joined now by Randy. Thanks, Dave. Steve Jarris won a tournament earlier in the season in Toledo, and Steve, with another win today, you really have to start thinking about player of the year honors. Well, you do. You know, I never really thought about it till till now, and I never really had myself in a position to do that. I mean, that's the ultimate goal every year that you step up to bowl. But, you know, I'm still trying to focus on the end of the year. We're still trying to make the top eight for the world championship. And ultimately, um, you know, that's the tournament I want to not have to qualify in because it's, it's a grind. And uh, we still got the Japan Cup to think about. So a lot of great tournaments coming up, and uh, we'll give it a run. Thanks, Steve. Steve Jarrett, Steve Ryan has been on quite a roll after the Tournament of Champions. He went home and won his 30th regional event, and with a win today by winning the title, he will become our 27th millionaire. Randy, thank you. Semi-finals, you saw Walter A. Williams Jr. just blitz past Mike Scroggins, who bowled pretty well except for the open frame early. Now it's Jarris Walchek, two right-handers. Walter Ray awaits the winner. First ever TV matchup between Walchek and Jarris here. Randy mentioned the regional championship for Steve over the... Christmas break, that was in St. Louis. Won that handily. Oh, wow. On the left of the TV pair, that came in high. And three stand now for Steve Jarris. Three, six, ten. Always some nerves to deal with, even for the greats. And Jarris has been around. Multi-pin numbers trying to raise the stat does so. You know, you, you have no idea how tough it is to bowl under these circumstances and situations. Under the lights, the cameras, the money. A couple, couple of weeks ago, Tournament of Champions, I mean, it was hard for me just to breathe, let alone get a bowling, bowling ball off my hand. A lot of fun to watch you, partner. That was dramatic. Thanks, buddy. A runner up to... Patrick Healy Jr., good start for Walchek. As you see, very calm and composed. The Baby Ruth real deal matchup. Well, there's no secret as to why Steve Jarris led the qualifier. Look at the huge difference in average right here. And to be quite honest with you, Lonnie Walchek has yet to be tested in any of his matches through match play. Wild card action, 7 of 12 strikes, continues. That good start to his day here in Seattle in the semifinal match with Jarris. Entering play 11th in the PBA Tour rankings. 216-43 average. For Lonnie Walchek, two career titles. Came last year. Vegas, Louisville. Wants to get back in the winning track here today in Seattle. And that's the way to do it. Lonnie Walchek using two different bowling balls playing two different lines. If you notice that this oil is really holding up well, he's pretty much in the same zone that he was in the wild card match. Two different bowling balls, you make the decision, you have to trust your instincts that the decision that you're making is correct, and then you have to get it off your hand good. Steve Jarris also using two different balls okay, as he the leaves the 5-8. Right. Dave, getting back to what I was talking about with Lonnie Wallachuk not really being tested, if you look at the match against Pete Weber, Pete averaged about 170 the last four games against Lonnie. He really had an easy go of it against champion Ryan Schaefer, Ryan Schaefer only winning two games. And against Timmy Mack, Timmy Mack only won one game. So, for Steve Jarris, Randy, a 223.92 average and his 12-8 match play record, including the win over Nathan Bohr, the rookie in seven. Last night in the round of eight that was held about three miles from here in Tacoma at Pacific Lanes. Of all the finalists, only one went the distance. 
twice. It was Steve Jarris. Comes in high, little break there. Six wobbles and stays up for Jarris. Two different bowling balls. That one never gets to the right. Had no chance of striking or at least hitting the one-three pocket. And fortunate that he comes away with nine spare. 28th time in his career has been on TV, third of the season, a 17-23 record on television. Just over 218 average for Jarris heading in. He's won the four titles we talked about. Lonnie has his two championships from last year. As he's got a double to begin this semifinal match. Walter Ray Williams Jr., in case you missed it, awaits the winner. He rolled over Mike Scroggins in the other semi. Got to really hurry. Wow. Catching that friction point at the end of the oil pattern pretty <laughs> late and flirting with the channel. Yeah, and Lonnie, he got away with one there. This ball gets a little too far to the right. He wants this ball to start checking up at about the seventh board. It goes all the way out to the third board, and lucky he only leaves a two-pin. Could have been a double wood there, 2-8. Just the two stands, relatively easy spare for him. Or worse, 2-8-10. Right. Open frame. Yeah. Ball takes care of the two with ease. Today, join ABC Sports, one-of-a-kind figure skating event. There are no rules, no judges when the United States medalists return to the ice to skate for the fans. It's the Chevy Skating Spectacular today at 4 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ABC Sports. Good weekend on the ices for ABC. NHL coverage starting yesterday. And figure skating today on ABC. Back to Lonnie Walchek. Four pin for Lonnie. Former All-American at Wichita State, 91-92. Goes over to the rosin bag, wants to make sure he's got a nice secure grip. Throws the spare ball a little bit faster and straighter. Lonnie's really come of age out here on the PBA Tour last year with two wins, and this year his third telecast. He's, he really knows how to bowl. Lost to the eventual champ to open our season, Robert Smith in Omaha. And Grand Rapids lost to Steve Wilson. Here we begin the second half of our tour season, the Earl Anthony Classic presented by Storm. Fisher Pavilion in downtown Seattle, Washington. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, our entire crew. Glad you could join us for our second half. Walter Ray Williams Jr. is in the finals already. He awaits the winner of this one, Jarris and Walchek. A little trouble for Jarris. You know, I would have thought that Steve, Steve obviously watched the game that Walter Ray bowled. And Steve is very capable of doing what Walter Ray did, taking his hand out of it, meaning cutting down on the revolutions and the hook, and throwing the ball a little bit harder. And all he has to do is just move a little bit further right with that shot he just threw on the right lane. Covers nicely. Could have been a tricky spare for Steve Jarris. Who, as soon as he was done with a round of eight in that seven game win, one of his two seven gamers in match play, that over Nathan Bore. He hustled over here to the downtown Seattle arena setting to practice on these lanes. Lonnie Walchek did not do that. He told us last night he was just going to practice this morning and get ready. Why the different approaches, do you think? Well, you know, I don't know. Some guys like to get acclimated to their surroundings. Some other guys, it doesn't really matter to them. Gets a little help there on the left of the TV pair. Barb and Bill Chrisman, the owners of Storm Bowling, Inc. And my bosses, I am a Storm staffer. Great people. They take great care of their, uh, their people there at Storm, make a great product and I'm fortunate to be a part of their company. Plenty of storm balls in action today. Yeah. Looks for the help late and does not get the pin action he had hoped for, so spare opportunity, nine down for wall check. Well, Lonnie, not totally zeroed in. You know, this ball here is, is close, but the thing is, Throwing it the way he is on that right lane, he, if he misses a couple boards to the left, that ball could really break loose and go right through the nose. 
I think that if Steve Jarrows can get comfortable going straighter and get lined up, I think Steve Jarrows may give Lonnie a run. I'll check a 13-pin lead now, as you mentioned last night. To us, after the round of eight win, his posture was a big issue, something he worked on in Wichita in the Christmas break. If he gets too steep in the posture upon his release, the ball will then have an erratic flow toward the pocket and the break point at the end of the lane pattern. Yeah, well, it'll change. You know, if he starts getting his weight too far forward early, it makes his backswing go up, and then it makes it get real steep up and down. When it gets steep up and down, you tend to grab it at release. There we go. Come on. Sounded like he liked it off the release, and he was correct in his prediction. Walchek has a 13-pin lead on Steve Garrison in the semifinal. The winner takes on Walter Ray Williams, Jr. When we come back, Dave's in on the road. We'll tell you all about future events on the PBA Tour. Two big majors, and how do you get tickets? We'll tell you when we return to Seattle. We welcome you back to the great Northwest. Seattle, Washington it hasn't rained much since we've been here, actually, in the past couple days. Space Needle takes 41 seconds in the elevator ride to get from ground level up to the observation deck. Chance to eat dinner up there. We've got a restaurant that rotates. Beautiful view of the Cascades. Getting back to the weather, Dave Ryan, where you weren't here for practice pro and qualifying, were you? When there Thankfully, was like I missed the blizzard. snow and ice all over. The Seattle area. But back home in Syracuse, New York, where I live, minus 15 <laughs> the last couple of days. So Ooh. I was enduring some wintry nice. conditions in the Northeast. Back to Jarris. Strike for him. Very happy to have Chris Peters, Rob Glazer, and Mike Slay, the PBA co-owners here at our home base of the PBA Tour in Seattle, Washington. It moved from Akron a few years ago. As those gentlemen have done a wonderful job taking over the tour, revamping and bring us great events like this one in Seattle. Can't thank them enough for all the big money we're bowling for out here on the tour, and without them, there may not have been a tour. Without that shot, not some competition here from Jarris, who now has a seven-pin lead with the turkey ball. Days in on the road. We're in Medford next week, 1 o'clock Eastern time, 10 here on the West Coast, and the ABC Masters and the Rito Open. A couple of events we're going to have for you from Reno, Nevada coming up on ESPN. Don't forget, you can log on to PBA.com. Plenty of great tickets available for U.S. Open in Anaheim, California, presented by Jackson Hewitt, and the World Championship from Ypsilanti, Michigan, the Eastern Michigan University campus. Log on, get your tickets today. Walchek gets some help. Wow, what a touch Lonnie put on that shot. He did get it out to the right where the other shot hung, but he gets his hand in this one, makes that ball grip the lane. Gets back into what we call the swish zone or the light hit zone. Told us last night, even through the round of eight, into the round of eight in Tacoma, he didn't have the feel he really wanted. Was still making his adjustments. And as we mentioned, the unusual did not make the 30-mile drive to practice with the opportunity the other players had. He stayed in Tacoma instead at the center there, Pacific Lanes, and worked on his game. Oh, from the go. place they qualified and went all the way through the round of eight. It doesn't look like he's worse for the wear. No, it sure doesn't. He's making quality shots right now. He's got an idea, a real good idea, of what he wants to do. And that's evident by the little adjustments that he's making to get the ball to get into the pocket. When a player lets go of it, when a player lets go of it and gets down on one knee like this, he knows it's good. Steve Jarrett's seventh frame working on a three-bagger trailing by 13 can cut. Lonnie Wallachek's lead to three. Oh, a split. Ugh. Seven to six, ten. Actually, it wasn't that bad. Didn't think it was that bad a shot. Well, it looked to me like he stood up on it right away. Let's take a look here. Like uh, he's kind of hoping for it to lay there. Of course, he does get the terrible break of leaving the six, Come on. seven, ten. Needs to slide it over, and that was a real, that was a terrible time to leave a split. Needs it. Will not get it. Seven stands for Steve Jarris, who told us after the round of eight last night he really likes pattern A and the synthetic lanes and approaches because of his soft hands and slower delivery. Touch bowler. He's down 28 pins now, though. Lonnie Walchick works on three straight strikes. Foundation frame coming for him. Chance for a four-bagger and take real command. 
I'll check a 227 pace. Max for Jarris is 219. Gets up. Late trip on the 10 pin. Come on. See, to me, that just looked like it was faster ball speed than it was in the eighth frame. And I think it was faster because it got off his hand clean. The one in the eighth frame looked like he grabbed it. And when you grab it at the bottom, you hit up on it, and the ball speed slows down. It makes the ball jump through the nose. It makes it go left, and it makes it hook high. Looks for the four-bagger. Chance for a 38-pin lead. Four righties. Mike Scroggins, the lone lefty. And Jarris had hope with his style. The oil would break down favorably to him. Yes, sir. Lonnie's always adjusting and appears to be dialed in quite well. How do you see the oil responding? Well, I think it's holding up great. And Lonnie Walter just pured that shot. But Lonnie's got a game under his belt, and he played the lanes very similar to this. He knew he threw it pure. It was just a matter of all 10 going down. He basically needs eight on the first ball, and he is going to advance to take on Walter Ray Williams Jr. for the title. This will be a five-bagger. Eight for the win. Yeah, All ten down. And the former Wichita State Shocker has, in fact, won two matches. All Walter Ray Williams Jr. has to do is slow down Lonnie Walchek next. That might not be easy. Good title match coming up, folks. You'll want to stay tuned. Another strike here. Lonnie's going to be in the 250s, and he's going to give Walter Ray all he wants for the title. Beautiful Brunswick installation here. The same lanes we used at the Mohegan Sun for the Tournament of Champions. Walter Ray Williams Jr. off to the side watching this semifinal match. Lonnie has advanced. And for the first time ever on TV, Lonnie will take on Walter Ray Williams Jr. Won 37 PBA titles. Deadeye himself, who has really revamped his game after struggling so much in the first half. One more to go, but it won't be easy. Against Walter Ray Williams Jr., who is red hot. Wallacek, Walter Ray Williams Jr., our championship match that's coming up from downtown Seattle, Washington. Live coverage of the PBA Tour continues. Our Geico Direct Championship recap when we return. Walter Ray Williams Jr. blitz Mike Scroggins in one semifinal, and Lolly Wallacek getting by Steve Jarris in the other. That sets up our championship match from Seattle. Walchick, Walter Ray Williams Jr. The PGA Tour has kicked off on ESPN with the Mercedes Championship live in prime time from Hawaii. 2003 Player of the Year, Tiger Woods, defending champ Ernie Els, Mike Weir, VJ Singh headline the field. Join ESPN for three hours of final round coverage tonight at 7 Eastern. Stuart Appleby has a two-stroke lead on VJ Singh heading into the next round. So, Randy Peterson, as deep as the mystery was, Walter Ray Williams Jr. in the first half of the season. No TV shows. You said, starting the broadcast today, he could make a good run. He appears pretty dialed in today. Well, he sure does, and he's doing exactly what he likes to do, and that's go straight and direct at the pocket. Lonnie Wallachek, on the other hand, is lined up as well. So I'm not going to go out on a limb and pick a favorite. I'll let you do that, Dave. Right. First, let's do the recap. <laughs> Geico Direct Championship recap to get to this point. Earlier today in our wild card match, it was Lonnie Wallachek defeating Norm Duke by the score of 222 to 202. Lonnie's first strike in the 10th frame beat the injured Duke. And in semifinal number one, it was Walter Ray Williams Jr. defeating Mike Scroggins by the score of 279 to 243. Walter Ray Williams Jr. throws 11 out of 12 strikes. And as we just saw in semifinal number two, it was Lonnie Wallachek defeating Steve Jarris by the score of 257 to 198. Lonnie throwing the last seven strikes to finish off Jarris. That is our Geico Direct Championship recap. So for the first time ever on TV, Walter Ray will take on Lonnie Wallachek. 37 and 35 in his brilliant career in title matches. Goes for his 38th next. Downtown Seattle, Washington, just moments from that location. We are here at the Fisher Pavilion, Seattle Center. Earl Anthony Classic presented by Storm in an arena setting. We're ready for the championship match. Lonnie Walchek, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Lonnie Focus is such a big part 
of your game. And we see how dedicated you are to that in terms of the mental approach. You're taking on one of the all-time greats. What kind of mental approach do you have to take on Walter Ray Williams here today? Well, mental uh, focus is a big part of my game. I could probably stand to loosen up a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I'm going to just stay intense, you know. Walter's got a good shot. I mean, he's one of the best of all time. If I bowl good, it's going to be a good match. And the reason they call him Deadeye, right? Good luck to you. Walter Ray, Deadeye would be the best way to describe your first match. You were right on the money, so dialed in after another match where you had to watch the other semifinal. Do you still feel your reaction will be the same? It seems pretty close. It, actually, it's kind of funny. The left lane seems to be hooking more, and the right lane seems to be a little tighter, which doesn't make any sense, but uh, that's bowling. <laughs> <laughs> best of luck to you. The arena setting here going for another championship. Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Walter Ray is talking about the right lane being a little tighter because Lonnie Walchek is throwing this kind of shot here. He's pushing oil into Walter Ray's line of attack. But what it looks like to me is Walter Ray still able to go nice and direct on both lanes. Lonnie Walchick has to be very, very good, especially on that right lane. And Del Ballard, our statistician, and I talked about it before this match started. If Walter Ray is smart, he makes Lonnie Walchick finish on the right lane, and that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> Saw the tour points, the money on the line today here. $40,000 for the winner. And tour points leading up to what could be all exempt field for next year. Neither bowler, of course, has won this year on tour. So to this point, neither is guaranteed a spot in the all exempt field next year. Well, I'll, I'll guarantee you this. Lonnie Wallachuk will be exempt along with this guy right here. We asked him, was he still dialed in, especially in the right lane? The answer is yes. Leading us to our baby real, real deal matchup, Randy. Just a little bit different in average here. One thing that Walter Ray does have is one game bold, 279. 11 out of 12 strikes. He starts with a strike in the first frame. 12 for 13 for Walter Ray Williams Jr. Stays hot. Well, what a great camera angle there. You get a look at the line that Walter Ray Williams Jr. is playing. Back to line. Works very diligently with sports psychologists back home in Kansas. So the mental aspect, as you mentioned, so critical is going to need it all today. Ten pin salt shot. And that was the one concern that Del Ballard and I had. Looping the ball on that right lane and that angle that ball's coming into, the week 10, that was the only issue. But Lonnie, being Lonnie and being a talented player and being smart, he will make an adjustment to try to take care of that week 10. Whether or not it works, it's another story. Take a look at Lonnie Walchick right here. This is going to be third arrow out to about the fourth board, playing a lot of angle down the lane. Check out the difference here. Walter Ray Williams Jr. piping it straight up the seventh board, a little bit of back end. I'll tell you what, I've always been a big fan of when you need a, when you need a strike to win, straighter is greater. Because when you get pumped up throwing it straight, all you do is throw it a little harder. Really hurry. Whoa! Get some help with a 10. <laughs> Knock down late. <laughs> he knows it. <laughs> you see him with a finger making that thing. He's like turning the, turning the steering wheel. You talk about Wani Walachek's mental approach. He's also in great physical shape. He works out all the time. And that's how he's able to endure the grind out here. Here he goes. Wheel it, wheel it, wheel it. Come on. Turn over there, ball. Gets the nice love tap from the six pin. Back to Walter Ray, who has not needed any help at all today. He's just been locked in entirely. However, Changes a bit on the right of the TV pair, which had been his strong lane. Through the nose, it goes. This was pulled all the way. Three, six, ten, seven, all up, and he has not made a split. The entire tournament. 
competition at Pacific Lanes in Tacoma. Here we're in oh. Seattle and two stand, an open frame for the legend. Hall of Fame inductee, 1995, 37 career championships. What a resume. Looks pretty fierce in that picture, huh? <laughs> 3.169 plus. And he's tied the late great Earl Anthony with the sixth PBA Player of the Year title last year. That probably won't happen this year unless he just takes the second half by storm. It's possible. Yeah. Knowing him, that's the way you get there. Finals underway, arena setting from Seattle, Washington. Live coverage on ESPN. The PBA Tour rolls on next. A jam-packed Fisher Pavilion at Seattle Center in Seattle, Washington. The PBA Earl Anthony Classic presented by Storm. Time now for the Euro Tire Rock and Roll. Lonnie Walchek ran to the subject in this final match. Third frame title match, looking to get this ball out to the right. And he starts turning the wheel of the big car, going, come on, ball. Gets the nice, beautiful up tap off the six. And that gives him an eight pin lead after three and a half frames. This week's Uniroyal Tire Rock and Roll. On the wall check, fourth frame, up eight. Looks for the double. Ball position in his hand, very critical also. As we break down the delivery from behind the lane, lane level look at Lonnie, but not the ball he wanted with that sort of reaction. As he told us last night, it's critical how he positions the right hand on the side of the ball. He gets his hand on the side of the ball, Dave, so he can get his hand to rotate around it to get it to do what he's wanting it to do. That one just, he just dead missed it at the bottom, but he also went to a different ball. Last shot I saw him throw in practice, he went flat 10. Second frame, he went flat 10. Changed balls, but made a bad shot. Spare ball takes care of the mark. Eight pin lead now for Lonnie Walchek. Well, he could have put a lot of pressure on Walter Ray by striking there as well. Walter Ray struck three of his four frames. Third frame was open though, just an eight pin count there. Now is when that mental focus, training, preparation, all pays off. Big moments like this. <laughs> It'll help as well on the left of the TV pair. But for those of you at home that are trying to get your ball speed to come down, you want to slow your ball speed down, take a book or take a page out of Lonnie's book. Move up on the approach, which shortens your steps. Hold the ball a little bit lower, which shortens your swing. Walk slower to the foul line. Bring your ball speed down, let your hand rotate around the side of it. You can create some room on the lane. Trying to make it 15 to 17 strikes. Walk away. Oh. 10 pins dance. Big, big shot here. Walter Ray could double and actually take the lead in the match. Almost leaves the 8 10. Eight false late. A little bit of a spaz reaction because of the fact that the eight pin almost stood there. Secure the 10 pin. Six times in his great career, the PBA Point Leader Award winner. High average award winner five times. Both of those honors coming last year for him. Currently 21st on the tour. In points, 66,415 heading into the TV show. It's been a struggle, but he's made his adjustments and he's back on TV now. Another 10 pin. After shooting 279 the first game, Walter Ray Williams Jr. is going at a 191 pace if he makes the spare. Made the one bad shot in the third frame. Everything else has been in the pocket, but almost the 8-10 on the right lane, flat 10 on the left lane. His ball is not getting there with the same type of authority that it was getting there his last game. Next week, the PBA Tour rolls on to Medford, Oregon. The PBA Bedford Open, the action starts as always at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, 10 on the West Coast here on ESPN. Don't miss the best bowlers in the world from Medford, home of Marshall Holman, the legend. It's all coming up.
Next week, live coverage on ESPN continues. The second half is in swing now, as is Walachek on the right of the TV pair. Well, I told you that Lonnie would figure it out. He changed balls. This shot he made was beautiful. Doesn't go just it doesn't go out as far to the right. A little bit straighter line on that lane. So he trusts his instincts. He went with it. And that time he made the good shot and it paid off. Hey, Brian Randy Peterson, our entire crew, live from Seattle. Trick shot magic. The ESPN zone in Baltimore coming up next here on ESPN. First important business to finish. Yes, sir! Big shot from Lonnie Walchek. That was a good one. Right you are, Lano. That was huge. Just a beautiful shot. Look at the rotation of that bowling ball. When it grabs the back end part of the lane, it, it starts to go left. The six pin just caves in the 10. Big lead for Lonnie Walachek. 29 pins. Walter Ray has to get on his horse now, Dave. Strikes out, he can shoot 231. Lonnie right now is into the two teens. Gotta have some strikes in a hurry, and that's the good start for Walter Ray. It was so brilliant in the semifinal match. Unstoppable. A couple of bad breaks on some pretty good shots, though, in this championship match. 10 pins, fifth and sixth frame consecutively after a strike in the fourth. So he's down 29. Chance for the double here to be down 19. Take it again. Yeah, and to me, that was a must strike right there. Right now, with a spare, the best Walter Ray is going to shoot is 211, which means that he needs disaster to come Lonnie's way, and I don't see it happening. As is Mark, but three of four spares instead of strikes when he needed them so badly. And now Lonnie Walchek, as we saw from the start of the day, had to compete in the wild card to begin play against Norm Duke. Those are the semifinalists who had to go all the way through in the new format, starting in September of 01, match play format, to get this far. Not easy. It hasn't happened much. Lonnie can add his name to the list. Come on, come on. First event of 04. Just avoids a split, that's wiggle. all I wanted there. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. Little wiggle. Gets it a pinch to the right, a little wiggle down the lane. You hear Lonnie saying a little wiggle. What that means is instead of the ball grabbing the lane and going left, it's sitting down there wiggling. Not, it doesn't make up its mind whether or not it's going to go left or not. Comes in light, only leaving the two pin. That's the good news. Easy spare. He'll take his plastic ball out and go straight and firm, right at the two pin. Still in control of the match. 28 pin lead, Lonnie Walchek. Firm command. Trying to wrap up his third career PBA title. Right now, Lonnie Walachek needs to fill Lonnie frames right. with good count and marks. Denied. Lonnie's had a very good year, as we mentioned, 11th on the PBA Tour ranking, so he would take a complete collapse or an injury, even if he doesn't win today, to not make the all-exempt field next year. Made up of winners and the top players on a tour. Summer tour trial. Victors as well. New field, new approach to the PBA next year. Been a big theme the entire season. Oh. Fifty players from the points list and winners as well. Eight from tour trials next summer. That's next summer coming up. And four from the weekly tournament qualifiers, a commissioner exemption choice. One from the weekly pro am as well. Randy's 63rd right now for you, partner. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice week for me this week. I only missed a check by two pins. Mm. Trick shot magic is coming up here on ESPN. Walter Ray trying to keep his name. In there for the all exempt tour of next year. Clinching it at least, he has not had a win, as we mentioned, all season long. Two more strikes in the 10th frame for Walter A. Williams Jr. and seven on his fill shot will force Lonnie Wallachek to mark. And it's on the right lane, and he almost went to a 10 on that lane. But first things first, Walter Ray must 
strike out. That's the start. Come on, we have a moment. We want to wish Walter Ray Williams Jr.'s father-in-law, Tom Pennington, a happy birthday today as well. Wife Paige's father. Little birthday present there. There's still some fire coming out of that tailpipe. You don't think this guy is, doesn't want to win this tournament? There's Paige. She's like, she knows the score. Come on, Walter, get one more. Dead eye. Right there again. Well, I think Walter Ray can handle seven, Dave. Lonnie Wallachek's going to need a mark in the 10th frame. As good as Lonnie Wallachek's bowling, it's not even an issue for him. It's not even, it's not even a thought. He's only thinking about getting up there and puring the next shot and going right through the pocket, striking. But Walter Ray did what he should do. He got up and made Lonnie show up in the 10th frame. Great finish for Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Trick shot magic coming up. From Baltimore in the SPN zone. 2 11 for Walter A. Williams Jr. That is his final count. Lane comparison breakdown. Lonnie has the opportunity to wrap it up here. Experienced Walter Ray knows that Lonnie likes the left lane better than the right lane. Makes Lonnie finish on the right lane. Just needs a mark here. And he's got his third career title. Does he have it? Looks good. Oh my Look God. Look out. Oh my goodness. A challenge now for Lonnie Walchek as it came in way light. This ball looks like it's in the right zone on the lane and just never grabs it, goes right through it. The only thing I can tell you is that he must have missed it at the bottom of the swing. He's got to get the ball over here to the left side of the one pin, drive it into the 6-10. The ball will take out the two and the four. We saw this in Toledo when Steve Jarris won his title when Chris Johnson left the 2-4-10 and missed it. He's got to have the spare here. Pressure on Lonnie Walchek. Doesn't have it. Unbelievable. We saw that in Toledo. It happens again in Seattle. Walter Ray Williams Jr. is your winner. On the bench, Walter Ray Williams Jr. wins his 38th career title, and Lonnie Walchek cannot believe what just happened. He had been so brilliant all day. A mark to win. He can't convert. And the Hall of Famer has earned exemption for next year. Incredible from Seattle. This ball never got far enough left. Lonnie is absolutely confused about the first ball where he left that. Absolutely unbelievable. You'd never think that Lonnie would have done that in a million years. Walter Ray Williams Jr. Career title number 38 for the legend. 211, 205. An unbelievable finish from the Great Northwest today. Today's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Earl Anthony Classic presented by Storm is brought to you by New Odor Eaters Plus, the only art supporting insole that protects against odor and wetness. By Dexter Bowling Golf and Casual, we have the right shoe for you. And by Bear Aspirin, take it for pain, take it for life. And an unbelievable finish, Walter Ray Williams Jr., 38th career championship of his legendary career. Walter Ray, your thoughts as Lonnie Walchek approached needing a mark to win. Did you ever think you could take home a title? Well, I thought there was a slim chance. I knew he, if any lane he was having trouble, it was the right lane. He actually missed a head pin earlier in the game. And making a mark in the 10th frame isn't always as easy as it seems. I, I think that's the first time anybody's ever not marked in the 10th frame against me after I, was, after I sat down for, for me to win the title. So that's a, a different feeling. Uh, I, Mark goes out to Lonnie. He bowled great all week. Um, that's a tough situation. I'm sure he'll come back. Uh, he's been bowling great lately. Um, I, I'd like to thank Storm uh, for helping sponsor the tournament and, uh, and Dexter. Um, so I, I, just wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow is the best way to describe it. As he earns his tour exemption for next year, congratulations goes to Walter Ray Williams Jr. in Seattle. And just a thrilling finish today.
Be sure to join us again next Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern here on ESPN. PBA, Medford Open from Lava Lanes. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Now for the entire crew, my partner Randy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from downtown Seattle, Washington. What a finish. Lonnie Walchek had a chance to wrap it up against Walter A. Williams Jr. He falls just short.